men can really be so annoying, like a little kid in a candy store going, I want, I want, I, me, 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 look at my penis. Look, what would you do to my penis? What can I do to you? What can I do to you? Like, it gets really annoying. It's like, oh, so just like back off. Like, you know, it's just, okay, you get it. Welcome, 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 welcome. We are back on. So hello, everyone. I'm Angie S, the founder of AngieS.com, link in the show notes, where I'm a health coach. If you want to work with me, you can come over to the website and get in touch there on Angie-S.com or email me directly at hello at Angie-S.com. The links are in the show notes. And also, you know, if you want to nominate a guest that you'd love me to interview on here on the podcast, please send me a DM on Instagram or reach out via the website or send me an email at podcast at angie So I just want to say like, I'm really enjoying this so, so much. And as per usual, the way to support me so that this basically can carry on is to, you know, rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. You can follow it on Spotify. You can leave a comment on the website where I have all the episodes listed as well. If you want to leave a review that way, you can as well. Any feedback I get from you has been super, super nice and lovely to receive. And it's really basically helpful to know what, what it is that makes you tick. So I know what works as well. So yeah, um... Today, I am talking to the women on dating men. So last week was, you know, dating tips for men. But this week, I've turned it around. And today, I'm talking to the women on how to date men. And in this episode, I covered two different parts. The first one is the safety. And because some of it gets a little bit serious, the second part is purely on the fun and breezy side of dating and sort of how to navigate those. So I want to preface this that I believe the more guys you meet, the more you know what you like, the more you know what you don't like, what warms your heart, which is why you don't go exclusive with a guy just because you kissed. It's like saying you've tasted carrots, no need to try courgettes, okay? You'd be liking a nutrients. Find out what you like. Don't be like me and try out multi-dating after 40, okay? Because that's just irresponsible, and a bit demoralizing because I learned so much about myself and men now that I don't turn down other offers for dates and just solely keep dating one guy just because we had a couple of good dates. I mean, that's just self-sabotaging. You know, I don't do that anymore. And it's actually not good for the guy I'm dating either because in a weird unconscious way or subconscious way, I think they can feel that, that you're only dating them and they, one, feel pressure Two, they feel that no one else wants you. You know, there's no competition and that's not a prize to them, you know. In a really basic, vulgar way, there is like, you know, courtship. It's about winning the prize. You know, I don't care which way you want to slice it. It is kind of what it is. And you as a woman, you get to choose which one wins. That's the game. So being uh, pure, being a good girl is not necessarily a prize to them. And it doesn't mean you have to do things that you're not happy to do. What it means is that as long as you do what's true to you, to yourself, that's self-esteem as well. You know, that self-respect is that, you know, if you want to go, if you don't want to have sex with any of them and you just want to date until one proposes, fine, do that. If you just want to date as many guys and then until you feel one is you know standing out and he's stepping up and you want to have sex just with him fine do that or if you want to have sex with multiple guys you know do that whatever it is that you need to do to figure yourself out and and those guys out you do that but you have to make sure you do it because it's right for you okay this is not to give you more anxiety uh you know dating is supposed to be fun you know, that's the other thing as well, is that when you go out dating, don't go dating to go and hunt. You know, don't be out there, you know, hunting for a buffalo. 
You know, this is not what you, you know. You may you you may want to be hunting for a husband. Maybe that is your end goal, and that's perfectly perfectly okay. But what I mean is that if you approach dating with that kind of mindset of I just gotta find him. I just gotta find him. I don't want to be single anymore. This is too much. Don't you know that? That's where you're gonna get yourself in trouble. You're gonna come across desperate. Try, you know. I think if you can use dating as a fun little playground, that you go out and all you do is you're meeting people. You're getting to find out your tastes. You get to find out. You, what, what triggers you you get to actually evolve as a human being by working on those triggers and not just laying it out on people that you know clearly has got nothing to do with them if you're just being triggered by some you know random people is to do with you and what it means to you so use that so that was the preface preface I wanted to to base this on and so with that being said The more people we meet, especially online, without having a real sense of them, you know, what I mean by that is online or via text, someone could have edited their response to you for the last three hours, you know, that's very hard to do in person, okay? Also, in the little bio, they could have had one of their friends who's super witty and sharp and eloquent to write it for them, again, they can't really do that in person. They don't have any walking by editors to, you know, to filter out all the, the nonsense that will come out of their mouth. So, and same for you. So, and me, you know, all of us, basically. Also, more importantly, in writing, you don't hear the tone of voice, as it turns out. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> we'll start off with part one, the safety. Okay. So... Putting your location on the dating apps. Obviously, there's an advantage to that because this way you get to meet people who, you know, live a bit closer to you, especially if you're in a big city like London, New York, you know, Paris. The travel, the commute is actually a factor when dating. But here's what I do. And this is for the safety. I don't put my exact location on the dating app. I don't even put the same borrow on the dating app. The reason why I do that is because I don't need any strangers to know where I live. And it's also a relief after a date that didn't go so well or that you were not feeling the guy, think he's creepy. At least he does not know where you live and where you live. And that's a relief. Okay. The second bit about the location is to be fair, you have to play fair on this one. As much as you actually kind of lying, you, you need to be fair. So make it up further away from town or like in a less nice area from where you actually live because this is for two reasons one when you tell them where you actually live it sounds like an upgrade okay don't say you live in Chelsea and you live in Finsbury Park that that's not going to go down well what I mean is like if you live in Finsbury Park maybe say you live in Wood Green there you go that way you've gone from zone two to zone three zone three is a cheaper area you know what I'm saying so just so you don't want to fake upgrade yourself on the app you want to under promise, over deliver. That's always, you know, that's the motto in life, really. The other reason why you want to make it sound further away from town is that it makes it sound like you're meeting them a bit more halfway than you really are. So it gives you a bit more, as a woman, a little bit more um, leeway. You can massage the location where to meet a bit more. This, you know, whilst making it more convenient for you as the woman. You know, we're all busy. We all have many balls in the air. Also with that, there is something that happens unconsciously when you do too much too soon as the woman. So you start to have weird expectations on the guys and start to resent it. Don't do that to yourself. Make your life easier. It does not work the same for guys. They need to feel they're pursuing you. You're the prize. And that includes travel where suits you at the beginning. That's how a lot of of men are. If you want to win at this... Don't do all the stupid stuff I did that I wish I'd known at 18. So it's okay to make them come to you more, okay? Okay, so another thing for online dating. Don't give out your phone number out until after you meet them and want to see them again. So here are are three things I'd say about this. I used to always want to have a phone chat first um, before meeting them so I get a better sense of them. But what I found out is that I may not like them in person and now they have my number. And I hear some of you say, well, you can block their number. Yes, 
but they can call you from different numbers too, several's if they have. And that's not hard to have, um, to be able to do that given the next tip I'm about to give you, okay? So if you do want to actually talk to them on the phone first, which is totally fine, because some women have had bad experience with men harassing them by calling them nonstop like 20 times a day, but if you still want to have a chat on the phone to filter them out a bit more, and it makes you feel more at ease, you know, there are alternatives to giving your own real phone number. You can give a, a Google number, but that's more for you. That's I think that's just for US because I haven't been able to figure this out for UK use yet. You can use other apps like Burner, which actually will give you a, a Burner number. <laughs> this is so Homeland Security. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not Homeland Security per se, but like, you know, the series Homeland. Okay. You can get cheap secondhand pay-as-you-go phone that you only use for dating. Very pimp move. Uh, and you would make me very, very proud over here. So that's the thing. That Those are the alternatives to like, if you want to have a chat with a guy. Personally, now, after having, you know, tried uh, for a while to have like this pre-chat on the phone before meeting them, I actually just prefer now to just say that I don't exchange, uh, I don't like to exchange numbers until I meet someone because that naturally sifts through the time wasters on the apps who just want a pe pen pal or just like sexting all the time. So if you want to filter those out, that's how I do it. And then only then after I've met them, I give them my phone number so this goes to now the the sec the third part which is pre-date preparation because obviously if you're not going to give out your number if you don't have their number you need to add extra security to when you actually meet so number one don't meet late and don't meet far from home okay also with the not meeting far from home there is another reason for that because you can there is a way to filter out a little bit uh, with some guys. I will tell you a story now. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that you can tell a lot by how or where a guy wants to meet you the first time. If you let the guy talk away and you should just ask questions and you stay open, he will reveal his intentions most of the time. So, I'll tell you a story. Okay, so I didn't... <laughs> Okay. Okay. First of all, I did not realize I had already spoken with this guy online in the past, but there was a point in this conversation that I'm about to read up to you that I was like, oh my God, I've had this conversation with him before. Needless to say, him and I never met ever uh, because of what he actually says again in this exchange. So I'm going to read it for you. So... Uh, oh yeah, so up until the part I'm about to read, we've been like chit-chatting about nothing. So I won't read those, but here's when we start to decide to meet, okay? He says, um, are you free tonight or tomorrow night? So I reply, oh, I can be tomorrow evening. What do you have in mind? Drinks and turn them green, followed by night... Wait a minute, sorry, because that one just cracks me up. Okay, drinks and turn them green, followed by a night of fun at my place. So I say, it's turn them green. <laughs> you've got them let, you know, you've got to let them uh, reveal themselves a bit more. I, I like to see how stupid they get. Um, so it's turn them green where you live. He says, no, I live by Gunnersbury Park, but it's not far. Five minutes drive. Kiss. So I say, I live in, dun, dun, dun. I'm happy to meet more in the middle around St. Pancras, for example. So he says, Depends who home we would go to. So then I say, well, no guarantee we will go home with each other. Never met. I highly doubt so. So he responds, that is lowering the bar a lot. Then I send a laughing emoji. Then he replies, it's a new year. Let's have fun and make the most of the moment we get. You will enjoy it a lot. I never responded. I mean, that is some bullshit if I ever saw any. That, I mean, this guy. Okay, so this guy, I mean, his picture anyway, is good looking, but no fucking way. In my opinion, that is predatory behavior because he's making me sign a consent form prior meeting him, for one. I don't know him. You know, we've never met. 
I could be completely put off when we meet. I mean, maybe he's smelly. Maybe he's smelly. Maybe he's boring. No charm, and so on. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, he really loves himself and is very sure about his lover's skills. Come on now. So of course I never replied, but that's what I mean. If you, if he starts to say, if I, it could have gone a very different way. If it said, um, actually, I don't know if it could have gone a different way because he sort of, he gave up his, he showed me his scars straight away by saying a night of fun at his place, right? So I guess fair enough to him, he was honest. But had he not said that, if he just said, let's meet in Turnham Green, and I didn't know where he lived, and I didn't understand, you know, what was behind it, then, you know, I I would have been wasting my time. So there you go. Um, (laughs) So now the following tips are... So the following tips are from my girlfriend who used to work in war zones and was responsible for security. So she has not shaked the habit of security, but I actually love her tips. And I used to use some of them when I was younger, but I think some of them I'm going to start picking up again because they're very good. So here it goes. She says, one, send your dates, photo and telephone number if you have, plus your meeting arrangements to your designated safe person. Two, If you go back to the place, put your phone tracker on. Now, this is very Homeland, but I'm actually uh, going to use it now. And also text the exact address to your safe person when you arrive. Three, you can also schedule a call with your safe person or send them a text with a safe word to let them know you're okay. So between you and I, I'm assuming a safe word has to be unguessable, right? In case you kidnap. So maybe like midloaf or banana, something like that. If you don't, and so, okay. And so, and if you don't, if you don't uh, call, then your safe person calls. That's what, uh, four, have a danger word for them to summon help or another for calling you back. You know, I know this sounds all really like, um extreme but you know what this way no sicko gets away with murder battery and assault you know uh you know like they say time's up so so this is one i got from someone else as well but she said do a background check on the guys she subscribed to a monthly background check site and check checks their criminal history if they have one she also pulls up the address phone numbers age etc to see if they match with what they told them online and they look up their Facebook and Instagram profile. So, okay. So between you and I, I get it, especially if you've been burned with creeps in the past, but I think that it's borderline privacy invasion here. So I'll tell you what I do. It's very important that that the person that you speak to is also the person they say they are. Okay. So this is what I do. I always Google them to check if what they told me on the first date or on the phone chat, if you exchange numbers, they actually matches their LinkedIn for their job or other platforms like Facebook or Instagram are really good to check if they're married or engaged. You'd be surprised. Um, And I think also in this day and age where we meet so many different people and we can all disappear and start a new life whenever we want, it is comforting to know their last name by the time you get a second date. I... Guys, I mean, now guys, they will know this, but I, <laughs> I, I, I usually always know their last name by the second date because it's really not hard to find out. Men love talking about themselves just like we do. And I think it's good precaution, you know, others would say it's weird, but you know what? We have to have our own back out here. This is not the fifties anymore. Uh, we have tools to, to protect ourselves. And I think we need to use those. Now, also, between you and I, there were some other suggestions that were a lot more extreme, but I think that's definitely maybe a cultural thing as well and if different countries, different regions, you know. But, yeah, so I think, obviously, all of those, maybe adapt them to wherever you are culturally. So now another safety measure for when you're on the date. One, meet in a public place, not too late. Like, at a time when you can have, like, a couple of hours with them, that's easy for you to get home from without necessarily needing a cab for a first date. You know, that will get pricey very quickly after a while. So two, obviously, I strongly advise no more than two alcoholic drinks or whatever your limit is. I always order some water or soda in line with it to not get drunk. 
and definitely do do all the water if you feel you've had too much to drink. Three, don't get in that car if you're not 100% you want to hook up, okay? This is not to condone or justify any behavior. This is just to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a vulnerable situation should your date dismiss a no and drive you somewhere secluded. Four, now I asked the same group of women from last week from tips on safety for dates. Um, So here's some more other ones that came up. Now, unfortunately, understandably, it went a bit dark quite quickly, but some of the advice is very sound. So here are the ones I'd like to share with you. I want to say also off top that I hate that I even have to mention these because it's not a nice feeling to know that there are people um, who don't come and meet you with like, you know, good intentions uh, of just getting to know someone, but have an agenda to pl- purely use you without your consent. You know, I think that's just despicable. So I will give you these tips because some of these tips are actually very, very, very good. Okay, one, never offer your drink order before arrival. If they ask, just so you're not sure yet. Now, between you and I, I think that's amazing. It's not something I always thought about because I offer it to guys too. You know, if I'm early and they're running late, I'll ask what they want to drink so they have it ready when they arrive. In my mind, it's just a nice thing to do. But then again, it only takes that one creep. So yeah, going forward, I'll say, I'm not sure yet, but thank you. Two, never finish a drink after coming back from the ladies' room. Always request a fresh one. In between you and I, that's very wise. Uh, So the trick is, I'd say, only go to the ladies' room when your drink is empty or almost finished. Uh, Almost finished. Then order a new one and don't touch the old glass. Like, no one can fold you on that. I think you can't just go the glass is full come back I want a new one I mean that's just like that's gonna make you look like so entitled and pretentious and just very weird okay so uh and also you don't want to make the guy feel as if you think he's a creep if he's not you know like just you know just play it cool also I like to add to this like I used to even make sure I had my eye on the drink when it was being ordered by my date you know and I would watch when it was being made and handed over and arriving to me in case this is something But unfortunately, it's not always feasible. So for example, if you sat at a booth and there's no table service, they get up to buy the drink. There's a pillar or people blocking the view you can't see. So I think it's a fine line between being alert and not paranoid, okay? Maybe the only way around it is to order soft drinks all night and hoping that if you act weird or just being really off for someone who hasn't had any alcohol that you know the bar staff would notice and do something you know I I did warn you up top it was gonna get dark quick but this is definitely an area where if you see something say something like if you see someone if you see something looking odd you see a woman all of a sudden falling asleep acting drowsy can't stand up properly difficulty breathing because some of those uh, date rape drugs uh, you can get respiratory depression okay which means you can't breathe on your own or at least very difficult and it can be lethal. Okay, so now we're done with the the dark stuff with part two fun dating stuff, okay? Okay, thank you for still being here. Uh, (laughs) If you're still listening, great. So part two fun dating, we'll start off with obviously sexting. Now, how do you deal with this if like, You know, sometimes you're just not up for it, okay? If you're up for it, great, play, go along, have fun, do you, okay? But now when you're not in that kind of space or ready yet with the guy, men can really be so annoying, like a little kid in the candy store going, I want, I want, me, 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 look at my penis. Look, what would you do to my penis? What can I do to you? What can I do to you? Like it gets really annoying. It's like, oh, so just like back off. Like, you know, just, okay, you get it. So if you're not comfortable yet and they're doing this shit and they're coming, you know, someone's coming on a bit strong, these are the things that you can do, okay? One, just ignore their messages or leave a lot of time between answers, you know, uh, you know, and just, just go to a different topic. The more mature ones will usually get it that you're not in that, in that space yet. Another technique, you know, again, you know, just be mysterious. Don't say too much. So let's say like if they say, you know, oh, do you like to do this? Do you want this done? And and what do you do? And what do you like? You can just say, to, 
I make them sound very creepy. Anyway, if you want to play with them and if you're attracted to them, but you don't want to have it everything in writing, you can say something like, who knows? If you're lucky, you may find out in the future. You know, just something vague like this. You know, just be very vague. Um, or you can also do like a wink emoji or you can send an emoji with the smile and the three hearts around the face. You know, the one. And, you know, by doing all of these things, like if you stay true to yourself, the time wasters will filter themselves out. OK, that way you get to stay aligned with people, you know, who's looking for the same thing or have the same kind of approach. Now, if the guy ignores the signs that you're not there yet with him, um, like, you know, the signs being like change of conversation, uh, no response to that bit, uh, asking him to slow down, then that's a red flag. And if, it does, if he doesn't like you asking you to slow down and he stops texting you after a couple of days of like random texting, then he's done your favor. He's out of the picture. Next. So I, obviously I like to like round this sexting part up with, you know, obviously there's nothing wrong with him wanting sex with you. It'd be weird if he didn't want to have sex with you if he wasn't attracted. But there's a way of reading the room. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more the disregard that he's not respecting your limit and that that's what's off-putting. You know, if it'll be this, I tell you what, this is the equivalent. If you're telling him to take you to a five star restaurant and introduce you to his mom, he's not a bad guy if he's not there yet. Okay. And to be honest, neither should you be. Uh, so it goes both ways. Okay. You're not aut automatically asexual just because you don't want to like sex back and forth with some like new guy. But guys, just so you know, when you keep on sexting, like, strongly without us ever prompting you or giving you any kind of information that we want to carry on sexting all we see or anyway all I see is a furiously masturbating man in his teenage bedroom going gimme 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 like not sexy at all okay the next bit the unwanted goodnight kiss how to avoid it so this is a trick I do if you're not sure if he's going to like bang, smack it on your lips and and you're definitely not feeling it, you don't want to see him again. When he goes in for that goodbye kiss, gently put your hand on his chest and make sure you turn that cheek so he doesn't lick your lips, ladies. And now the good thing is you can unmatch him on the app and he doesn't even have your number. See how that's all making sense now? Do you feel the relief? So definitely put that like hands on his chest. It's almost it's like, but not aggressively. Don't like push him away. That's just weird. But just put it just gently, like as if you know, it's like a way how you just you know how you say goodbye to people. Just like just just softly put your hand on his chest, not sexually, because then he'll definitely go and lick your lips. Just <laughs> just put your hand there and definitely turn your head, real good. And the winter is great for that because in the winter you have, maybe you have like your hat on, your hoodie, so you, you know, maybe with a bit of luck, he'll be like just kissing your, your the, the hood from your coat, you know. Now, the next part is sex. If, you, if you're not ready to have sex with a guy, that's easy. You just won't go home with a guy. Simple, okay? But if you really want to have sex with him, but in your mind, you've already had a conversation with yourself that you will not have sex with him. Not tonight. Okay, here's what you can do. One, leave the house in a mess, like embarrassingly dirty and messy. Two, shave nothing, nothing. Wear ugly knickers. Now, those won't stop the guy, okay? And to be fair, the older we get, the less it will stop us too because we're like, ah, oh, fuck it. If you haven't seen hair and all knickers by now, I don't even know what you're doing in my bed. And I don't need to be cleaning for your arrival, yeah, but it increases the chances of slowing it down a bit. And okay, maybe this point was a bit mute, but it definitely worked in my 20s and 30s. So have at it, ladies, in your 20s and 30s, use those tips. And if you want to avoid going home to his, make sure you have something scheduled early in the morning. So you don't have to like, you know, get like a, a late cab or really early cab and that kind of stuff to, you know, and spend more money on, on, on some new guy that's just crazy okay I mean it's not crazy but you know why do that to ourselves okay so final one temperature checking from guys okay so if you haven't heard from a guy you dated a while back 
or from an ex you used to date and all of a sudden you get these texts you know we you know I think we call them temperature checking so if all it says and you haven't spoken with them in a while or that you've just broken up you know they they miss you after like a few days or a week or two and all they say to you is how are you don't respond don't respond that's just an ego boost anyone who actually truly cares about you knows to leave you alone if you really like them and they know that this can be torture especially if it's um you know someone you dated and you you really like them I've been guilty of being on both ends of that so I've been guilty on sending a little text that was harmless to me but actually had an impact to someone else and I've also been on the other end where someone I really liked they ended it with me and then they just do some little temperature uh checking text and like an idiot I'd reply so you know it's not to say that I've never done the mistakes I've actually done them both and you know now you know now I hope that I will definitely not do that again and be wiser so yeah I just thought that um so I think that's that's something that's good to know Uh, it will save you (laughs) it will save you a lot of like headaches so yeah so that's our episode I hope you enjoyed it Please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, follow on Spotify and for all other platforms, whichever way you show love is how you can support this show. Any questions or suggestions for future episodes, you can drop those via the website at angie-s.com forward slash podcast or come and find me on Instagram. I have two accounts. One is tool for this shit podcast and the other one is health lifestylist. Links in the show notes. See you next week. And oh, next week yeah i have an interesting guest i'll see you next week and until then using health inappropriately